hello guys good evening welcome back to our channel so today in this video as you already know we are going to discuss about high radius corporation interview questions so this in this video we'll be talking about the interview process the salaries the salary that was offered and about the technical question and about coding questions as well so firstly let us see the mail that we have received from our subscriber friend so hi team i have selected in high radius interview I have five plus years of experience. There are two complete technical rounds, one tech slash manager round and a HR call. Below are the questions that I remember from the interview. Yeah, so if you talk about the process, there were two technical rounds, one was and one tech come manager round, and finally a HR call. And this in video is for five plus years candidate. So in this video, as we already mentioned, we will be talking about coding as well as the technical questions and if you want to share your interview experience please do uh, reach out to the email that is there in the description so that it might help someone who is trying to prepare for the interviews and help them in cracking their interviews so and if you want to grab some amazon opportunity like uh, some big discounts you can click the amazon link in the description as well so firstly we'll be talking about the coding questions so here we go so this is the first question asked to find the smallest missing number so input here is an array of numbers so we have to find the smallest missing number from that array so if you see here two four six one so three is missing one two three and five five is also missing from the array like one and six are the one is the least number and six is the highest number if you consider that three and five are missing and to as it was to find the smallest num missing number we have gone for three so we have to write that so in the upcoming videos we will share the solution as well so coming to the next question, ask to implement a REST API to update a resource. So we have to uh, write the code, like basically put call to update a resource. Next, using Java 8 streams, find the highest salary employee. So it is a bit easy. Uh, obviously, if you are uh, well versed with the predefined methods that are already present. Next is, so there was one more question, I think. Yeah, okay, so these were the four questions that were asked as part of the coding, like coding section. So in the mail, there was a separate section like coding. So sorry, three questions, like one was to find the smallest number, second was to implement the REST API, and third was to find the highest salary using Java 8. So now we'll start about, talk about the oral questions. So first question, like self introduction roles and responsibilities and about the current project obviously in any round if you are an experienced candidate this would be the first question that you will encounter out of the three things one you will definitely encounter and to get selected you have to be very confident while you are answering this so be prepared in advance while attending the interviews so next question is how activator is spring boot is configured what are its benefit so to that uh, firstly, we can talk about the configuration part like we need to have the dependency of Spring Boot Starter Activator. Then in the application.properties file, we need to disable the security for activator endpoints like management.security.enabled equal to false. And if you want to use the separate port number for accessing the Spring Boot Activator endpoints and the management port number in application. So like we need to change the management.port equal to whatever port number we want to give you want to access and what is spring boot activator so activator brings production ready features to our application monitoring our app gathering metrics understanding traffic or the state of our database becoming becomes trivial with the with this dependency the main benefit of this library is that we can get production grade tools without having to actually implement these features ourselves Activator is mainly used to expose operational information about the running application like health matrices info dump environment etc it uses http endpoints or jmx beans to enable us to interact with it once this dependency is in the class path several endpoints are available for us out of the box as with most spring boot spring modules we can easily configure or extend it in many ways for a few examples are health like slash health slash env like environment slash beans slash heap dump slash shutdown so what does slash health does summarizes the health status of our application it it gives the overall view of our health of the application. Slash inventory returns the environment, current environment properties. Additionally, we can retrieve the single properties as well. Beans returns all the available beans in the application. Like 
bean factory hip dump builds and returns hip dump from the jvm that our application is using and shutdown pro from the graceful shutdown of our application so this was about the spring boot actuator like configuring it and what we can answer so next question it is also related to spring boot what is dev tools and how it is helpful so before getting into the answer if you haven't subscribed us please do subscribe please do like the video it will definitely motivate us as, as well so coming to answer so here is the answer dev tool stands for developer tools the main aim of the model is to try and improve the development time while working with the spring boot application spring boot dev tools pick up the changes and restart the application we can implement the dev tools in our project by adding the following dependency in the form so by basically spring boot dev tools there is a dependency that we need to add and the scope should be the runtime so spring boot dev tools provide the following features like property defaults automatic restart live reload remote debug tunneling remote update and restart and coming to property defaults when when we use the spring boot dev tools module during the development caching of themely or free marker groovy templates are automatically disabled and coming to auto restart like auto restart means reloading of java classes and configure it at server side after the server side changes it deploy dynamically server restart happens and load the modified code live reload is also known as auto refresh so here what happened the spring boot dev tools module in includes an embedded server called live reload it allows the application to automatically trigger a browser browser refresh whenever we make changes in the resources so it is also known as auto refresh remote debug tunneling spring boot can tunnel jd wp which means which stands for java debug wire protocol over http directly to the application it can even work application deployment to internet cloud providers that are exposed port at atn443 remote update and restart there is an another trick that dev tools offer that is supports remote application updates and restarts it monitors the local class path for file changes and pushes them to remote server which can then restart it we can also use this feature in combination with live reload so this was about dev tools next question it is also from spring or spring boot you can say the difference between yaml versus dot properties file so as per my knowledge these are the le at least some of the differences dot properties file stores the data in sequential format whereas dot yaml shows it in hierarchical format properties supports like dot properties supports only key value pairs basically string values whereas dot yaml supports key value pair as well as map list scalar type values dot properties is specially used by java whereas yaml can be used with other languages as well like python ror like other other languages as well when mapping multiple configuration profiles then pro dot properties requires you to create dot properties file per each profile wherein yaml you can create one, create a selection selection like section for each profile specific inside a single dot yaml file and one thing here is to notice at the rate property resource annotation only can be used with dot properties file so these are few differences which we can talk about when we encounter such type of questions next question what is the difference between patch and put this is related to rest so in simple words put is a method of modifying a resource where the client sends the data and updates the entire resource patch like on the other hand patch is a method of modifying resource where the client sends partial data that is to be updated without modifying the entire data so this is the difference so like in put we need to send the entire json which we are updating and in patch we can send a section certain section that needs to be updated next internal implementation of hash map so need to talk about how key value pairs are stored about hashing about equals method about hash code method importance of uh, like about hash collisions and about how get operation works importance of hash code and equals method so all these things we need to talk next is how to configure global exception handler so using at the rate controller advice annotation at class level and at the rate exception handler at the method level we can definitely uh, configure the global exceptions next question how to solve circular dependency 
so first let me claim that circular dependencies are bad no matter whether you use spring or not you should refactor your code in order to get rid of them now the solution to the problem as far as i know spring will fail to handle circular dependency only when we we use constructor injection so when we let spring inject the dependency by property or by setter injection it should work another way to break the cycle is by telling spring to initialize one of the beans lazily by using the at the rate lazy annotation so instead of fully initializing the bean it will create a proxy to the inject proxy to the inject into the other bean the injected bin will only be fully created once it is first needed so this is how uh, this is about the circular dependency like what it is and how to get rid out of it now next question how to interact to microservice what is the best way to do so it depends upon your requirement we can use fin client we can use saga pattern or we can use rest template as well so it's up to you like like how your application like what your application is you being used that you need to talk about next ask to create a custom annotation so here is the example that where we have created a custom annotation it there traceable which ideally uh, logs the information before and after like along with the spring aop we use this and we can log the information this is from my project so i have copy pasted the code from that that only so here if you see it there target the above annotation defines the where the apply where to apply the annotation so in our case it is at method level so we give remain dot method as parameter and return the at the rate retention denotes when to apply this annotation in our case it is the runtime so that's how we define so we need to have at the rate inter interface as well so that's how we create a custom annotation next question asked about spring boot transaction working what the isolation and propagation levels so ideally when we talk about spring transaction spring so there are ideally two types like one is declarative and other is programmatic transaction management and coming to propagation uh, it depends how the transaction relates to each other common options like required requires new so required will tell code will always run in transaction creates a new transaction and reuse one of you one if available creates requires underscore new code will always run in a new transaction suspends the current transaction if one exits the default value of a thread transaction is required and this is how often you want and coming to isolation defines the data contact between the transaction so there are four types of isolations like isolation read uncommitted isolation read committed isolation repeatable read isolation serializable so we need to talk about all those things next is query to find the third highest salary so i have uh, just tried this uh, and it will work definitely so there are n number of ways to achieve this so one of the ways is this query this will also work even with the duplicates if there is a uh, duplicate salary as well even then it will work so now next question it's on future versus completable future so completable future is a new uh, enhancement that got enhanced in java 8 from java 8 we uh, have this class it, it ideally implements the future interface class as well so here is the answer java's future is a placeholder to hold something that will be completed in future without blocking api you will have to use it it's is done method to pull it periodically to check if the task is finished certainly you can implement your own asynchronous code to manage the polling logic however it incurs more boilerplate code and debug overhead Java's completable future is innovated by Scala's future. It carries an internal callback method. Once it is finished, the callback method will be triggered and tell the thread that the downstream operation should be executed. That's why it has then apply method to do further operation on the object wrapped in the completable future. There is no scope to run multiple dependent tasks in non-blocking fashion with future, whereas completable completable future class can provide the functionality to chain multiple dependent tasks that run asynchronously so we can create a chain of tasks where the next task is triggered when the result of the current task is available so these are few things to talk about future and completable future next question or uh, is from hibernatable <coughs> questions on many to many and one to many mapping so you have to give or uh, 
detailed explanation and it would be better if you take uh, real time examples from your projects or your previous projects it would give a uh, good impression like you have hands on experience on that and this is the final question how to maintain transaction when multiple service calls are involved so again it depends like we can use saga i believe like because we in our current project use that so i would go with the saga pattern you can have two phase commit as well so it depends again uh, on the project to project and requirement to requirement so these were the questions that were asked as part of high radius corporation interview thing so here is a complete mail so the current salary was 13.5 and offered salary is 26.5 as i was holding other offers as well so from 13 to 26 for five years of experience candidate is a very good salary so i hope you enjoyed the video or the questions that has been shared in this video and i hope i wish that this question should be helpful to someone at least few people in their interview preparation so if you haven't subscribed please, please do subscribe please do like share and provide the feedback in the comment section please do share it to other technical platforms as well so that it might help someone who is looking out for similar kind of videos so if you're on our channel for the first time and wondering who are we and what we do so we are ideally a bunch of software engineers who attend interviews and share our real-time interview experiences and apart from that we also share our subscriber friend interview experiences to these channels and if you are wondering like the, what are the channel names what are the company names that are getting printed on your screen so we have already shared this interviews on our channel you can visit our channel and definitely you will get benefits in your interview preparation so that's it in this video thank you and have a great day